champions collide. That powerful left hook. Jermel Charlo bringing his three titles to the ring. The young lion roaring tonight. Brian Castaño putting his championship belt on the line. He has the rise to the occasion. Who will become the undisputed champion of the world? The best fighting the best. History will be made. Jermel Charlo versus Brian Castaño for the undisputed 154-pound world title, live on Showtime. Basketball has a new champ on the way. This Suns Bucks series is crazy. I think it's definitely going six or seven. The stars are showing up. It's planning out to be just what we expected. And there's still time to get in in all the hoops action with DraftKings. DraftKings is offering all players a free shot at up to $5,000 in total prizes with their free-to-play pools. That's $5,000 in total prizes up for grabs each game. And the best part is free to play. DraftKings free to play pools are easy to enter. Just download the DraftKings app, go to pools, and choose from a wide variety of free contests for opportunities to win cash prizes. All you have to do is answer a handful of questions around what you think is going to happen during the night's game. Track your results while teams chase the crown. Questions like, which team will cover the spread? Which team will hit more three-pointers? And which team will win the fourth quarter? DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable so you can deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Get in on all the action before the season ends. Download the top-rated DraftKings app now. Use the promo code SMOKE when signing up for your free shot at $5,000 in total prizes during the finals. Head to DraftKings pool page to get your shot at huge cash prizes. That's promo code SMOKE for a limited time, only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for full details. Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke. Jack. My boy. We went out and got him, man. A lot of people have been asking for this dude, man. We tracked him down. Real one. You already know. Real one don't get no realer. Bullies get bullied where he yeah, comes yeah. from. No, I'm talking about it. Welcome to the show, man. Zebo, what's up, bro? Man, what's up? What's Glad up, bro? Good to brothers? see you, man. We finally tracked you down, man. My guy. You be on the move. Busy. Man, Life man. after basketball. Man, it's been a blessing, man. You know, I'm thankful, man. You know, where we come from, man. You know, when I made it out of there, I made it. So, you know, I'm yeah. thankful every day and I count my blessings. So, what's life been like after basketball for you? I, you were talking before, you, you very busy, father, business. Talk to us about what's going on with you after man, basketball. Man, it's been up and down, bro. You know what I mean? But, you know, overall, you know, I'm thankful. You know, I had some losses close. You know, I'm. Mm-hmm. Rest in bro, peace. Yeah, rest bro, in bro, peace. double law. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, double law. You know, right after I retired. So, you know, mom before that, a couple mm-hmm. years before. Mm-hmm. So, I think he was with me then. Yeah. But, um, Besides that, everything, kids, everybody safe and healthy, and you know, just being strong and you know, being a leader for the family. You know, absolutely, it's important. Uh, obviously, twenty twenty was a disaster for the world. Um, halfway through twenty twenty one, what are you encouraged about moving forward? Man, just everything, man. Um, you know how everything going, just where we had, you know, going and where we, you know, forward to as a black culture. You know, mm-hmm. what Stack Jack doing, what you doing, you know, being the community. You know, we always been in the community, you know what I mean? It's, this ain't nothing for us and um, just helping and um, just everything been going good. That's good. Who have you been paying attention to in the NBA this season? Man, all of them. You know, I've been, <laughs> I love the game. So, I, you know, I love the league and what, what it's, where it's at. So, you know, I watch, you know, especially the Grizzlies, Lil' Ja, yeah. you know, the Spartan Dogs on there, Jaren, X. So, you know, watching them, Portland. You know, I just, I, I like the league and, you know, I got still a lot of youngsters, you know, I talk to and um, so I watch them, so. I'm a fan of the game. Yeah. What would t- 20 and 10 Zebo do in this NBA? Man, I'm probably 30 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep up. Them knees can keep yeah. up with the pace. Man. They might have yeah. you out there like 220. I don't know. They, yes. All the stuff running. they got now, you know yeah. what I mean? They probably have me real slim, you know? Uh-huh. So, you know where the game is at, man. It's, it's like a good, you know, I, I like the game. You know, mm-hmm. spread out. You show a lot of guys skills. Yeah. You've been you stepping know? out shooting jumpers. Yeah. 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 So, you know what I mean? That jumper being wet, so. And these guys, it's showing their skill set, you know. But I, like the game to me is like a revolving clock. I think everybody, everything's gonna come back around full circle. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna get a class with four shacks, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, so you know, I like where the game is at. Um, thoughts on the game being so guard oriented and as you mentioned, skilled. Um it skills at all time high. Uh and and it's very guard dominated uh thoughts on that because i mean when we came in the league we used to play and you were one someone 
inside out. The yeah. ball had to touch the paint before we shot, but before we did anything. Now it's revolves around the guards. Man, it's like, like 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 I just said, like you said, the game when we was coming in, the big man had to touch the ball. The ball got to go through the post. That's how you start to play. You had to. So you know, but the game is different now, and, and it started to change. Like I think for me, towards like in Memphis, towards you know when they put me on the bench and they wanted to, Fizz wanted to play smaller and <clears throat> the line up. So Golden State was doing their thing. A lot of teams seeing how they was playing and, you know, wanted to adapt to that. But, um, man, I like it, man. And I think if I was out there, you know, I'd be handling the business. And still got some teams that play that old way because, you know, Golden State, they play through their big. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's still some teams yeah. that still play that I mean, way. you still got, but like you said, dominant the, bigs. They're bigs at the three point The normal line, big, though. yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> what, what, what bigs impress you the most? And I like um, MB, you know, he's mm -hmm. a beast. So, yep. Jaron, you know, a lot of bigs, man. A young boy from um, uh, Zion. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he's special. You know I know you like him. Yeah. Y'all got some similarities. <laughs> he's he's, like right. more, he's <laughs> more athletic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If he, can yeah. you imagine what he would have been like with Zion's athleticism? Oh, my God. Could have been over. Crazy. Man, that boy special. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, LaMelo, so. You know, I just like the game, man. These young mm -hmm. players, they different, and you know, they got their own style. And you know, the league is different when we come in. Right. You know, these kids are like a lot of players are like Allen Ivers. He changed with the cornrows. Yeah. It's like that now for all the kids coming in. It's, it's different generation. So you know, it's, it's a good thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Grew up in uh, Mary, Indiana. Yeah, M Town, man. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about your your upbringing and when did you find basketball? I found basketball probably third, fourth grade. Me and my brother and my sister um, at the Powell Club. You know, he came, Coach Bill Alter came, put a ball in our hands. The first man put a ball in my hands. So, <clears throat> you know, a small town, you know, we breed hoopers. You know what I mean? You do the research, you know, we got, what, the second most state championships in the state, you know, marrying my mm -hmm. school. So, we breed hoopers. So, you know, that's just all, that was always in it. So, growing up watching Reggie and, you know, I, I was poor, so I come from nothing. So. Growing up, we you know you get the free you get channel four you know that's the free channel so mm -hmm. you know watching Rick Smiths come through Duncan Dutchman and you know Dale Davis and Tony also you know just growing up wanting to be a Pacer and um, you know watching Jordan. Mm -hmm. Who were your basketball influences growing up? Besides, I know you say Reggie and them, but who yeah, who's somebody? Indiana, man, Jordan, Scotty, <clears throat> Scotty, Chris Webber, uh, you know. Um, Coming up like Carl Malone, the mailman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's just man, it's everybody, man. You know, I just love the game. You know, that's all we have. Don't watch Ooh, them games. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was a highlight. You know, we played in the alley on a, a goal with no, you know, a little bent up goal. Mm -hmm. But you know, we we to us, that was that you was know, it was fans. man, it was everything. That was that's your finals. Like, man, we what? We we couldn't wait to get to the goal. Jack, with the NBA Finals wearing down, we're about to play a little game. Where can you use Manscaped? You ready to play? I ain't no musty ball, boy. Let's go. Can you Manscaped in the shower? Of course you can. It's waterproof, so you can let it rain and wash your pubes down the drain. Nothing like pubes in the drain. Make sure they go all the way down, please. Mm -hmm. One for one. What about in the dark? You're damn right you can. 7,000K LED lights make it easy to get yourself looking tight. All right, you're two for two. What about your body? Where can you use Manscaped? Manscaped isn't just for your ball fro, bro. I heard about that. You can use it on your chest and your holes. What holes? Good question. That's the trifecta, Jack, the big three. Get Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 to avoid a hot ball summer. Mm. Also get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Seal the deal with Manscaped's ball deodorant and crop reviver. Both included with the Performance Package 4.0. If you want your tree to stand taller, then you gotta trim the hedges. With Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0, which also has a skin safe technology to keep you cut free. No St. Nick's over here. Mm -hmm. Man, no Nick Van Exels either. Go to manscaped.com, use the code SMOKE, and have your beach balls shine in the summertime. So your sophomore year, you win a state championship. Your senior year, you win another state championship, but lose the player of the year to Jared Jeffries. Man, come on, man. <laughs> hey, Jared. <laughs> hey, Jared, you know that's my award. 
Nah, Jerry, that's my brother. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, yeah, Every time boy. I see Went Double J, I tell him, I say, man, that's my award, man. Yeah. That's my award, man. You got my award. But nah, um, man, we had some battles. You know, I won a you state. You guys beat them yeah, in we the beat state him. championship, right? Yeah. And then he won player of the year, though. Yeah. Man, you know, and you know, Jerry was down here in Bloomington. He was going to IU, Bobby Knight. You know, I was down in Mary. You know, I'm a little rough around the edges. In the hood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little rough so around they, the edges. You know, I ain't. You know, you know how that go. Yeah, you yeah. know, a little politics, <laughs> but you know, Jerry, that's my brother, though. But um, it's all love. But man, it was good in high school. Man, I enjoyed it. Man, that's dope. And Everybody then uh, onto the McDonald's game where Jack was robbed of the MVP, but you actually took yeah. home the MVP, twenty three and fifteen. Yeah, dominated. My numbers wasn't looking like that. <laughs> Man, D Miles. I had 21. I only missed two shots, but I, mean, I ain't have does. I didn't have 15 boards. <laughs> <laughs> who was in that game? Remind, remind us who was Man. in that game. Omar Cook. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, D Miles. D Miles, mm-hmm. yeah. Rest Shout in peace, D-Miles. Eddie Griffin, my boy. Yeah, hey, rest in peace, Eddie Griffin, yeah. He was cold. He, he was gang. cold. He had a wetter. He had a wetter. To me, Eddie Griffin was like more of like the today's t- today's yeah. how mm-hmm. to yeah. people knew who he was. A lot of, you know, like you know, people in the basketball world. Mm-hmm. So, he kind of reminded me of the kid that's in Houston now. Uh, Woods. Woods. Yeah. Woods. They yeah. play just alike. Yeah. They got the similar game. Yeah. Cool. Eddie been doing that face up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see him doing that in high school. You know what I mean? Like he was working on that. So he was, you know, but we had some dogs, though, man. Yeah. We had some dogs. Talk to us about the recruiting process. Uh, you ended up choosing Michigan State, but where else did you consider? Michigan State, I was... Coach Izzo was every game. I look up in the stands, he'd be in every game. You know what I mean? And for me, that was big because, you know, showing that you wanted me. I'm like, you know, who he was recruiting me the most. You know, they was <clears throat> at all the games. I mean, every time you look up, I see him. You know, and then Little Ham- Leonard Hamilton, you know what I mean? Down there, he was in Miami, Florida at the time. So I was going to go to Miami, Florida if I didn't go to Michigan State, mm-hmm. you know, because Coach, you know, Leonard, you know, he wanted me real bad. I liked it, his program, and, you know, he was going to let me rock out. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you have any crazy stories about Coach Izzo? Draymond told the story how they got, like, a shouting match on the phone during the recruiting process. Like, do you have any crazy Izzo stories? Man, Izzo was hard when uh, me and Dre was in college because, you know, I was one of the first, his first ever youngest player to leave school. Like he never had no a one and done. A one and done or no sophomore leave or nothing like that. I don't think he had no undergraduate players leave. So I was the first one. So he wasn't really kind of used to that. And but he supported me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My mother, we were struggling, she was struggling. You know, I was taking care of her. So, you know, he understood that. You know, coach knew where I come from and the struggles I came from. So he knew what I was doing and I want to take care of my mother. So, you know, I was like, coach, I'm ready. You know what I mean? Because I was going to go out. I got a story. I was after the McDonald's game, I was going to go out of high school because D Miles told me, like, man, I'm about to go mm-hmm. to the league. I'm like, you going to the league? I'm like, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so after the McDonald's game, I got <clears throat> All American. I went to the Kentucky Derby All Star game, got the MVP there. So I was killing all, all the summer circuits, all the All Star games. I was getting MVPs. And I, me and Eddie was ranked number one, number two player in the country. So the Poston twins. I was gonna sign in with them. I was at in the hood at the house with my mom and the Poston twins. And the letter was on the table, bruh. And I looked at mom. I said, Mom, send down, send down. I said, Mom, what you want me to do? She said, I want you to go to college for one year, baby. So I looked at the twins. I was like, man, I can't do it. Mm. But it shit, mom would have said, go for it, baby. Out of <laughs> Yeah, right there. Yeah, you know I mean, but that was the best. Thing that I did, you know, because God, you know, what's playing for you, you know what I mean? Yeah. God, God, what's playing for you gonna happen. So that was the best move for me going to Michigan State because look, like, I learned so much how to be a man. And, you know, mm-hmm. of course I was still young, but you know, learn a lot, you know, with Coach Izzo and discipline. That year I was there at Michigan State, I learned a lot. I love Coach. They like that's my family. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, but it was good, man. So you guys play with uh Don Julio, shout out Jay Rich. Don yeah. Julio. Uh, Charlie Bell. Hey, Jay Bones. We call yeah, Jay Bones. Jay Bones. <laughs> yeah, Jay Bones. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, CBZ. You guys make a Final Four run. Talk to us about that one year in college and, and making a run to the Final Four. Man. Shout out Charlie Bell, too, man. man oh, boy. Good dude. CB. My boy Mo Cleese, Mo Pete. What's happening? Oh, Flintstones. Yeah. Yes, sir. My you classmate. Did. Man, uh, it was, man, it was great. You know, coming off winning, winning the state. Going to Michigan State, going to the Final Four, just that experience. You know what I mean? Going down there, I think it was Final Four and I was in Atlanta, just playing in that 
dome with all them fans. I mean, I think we played against Gilbert. We played against Gilbert. Man, it was just, it was, man, it was unbelievable. You know, one of the best times, really, in you know, my college career is that, you know, the Final Four. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't make it, but, you know. Still the experience, we, yeah, was there. Yeah, we got Final Four, we got B, so it's so all you, good, though. You take that one year of college and, and time, decide it's time to go. What was your uh, draft night experience like? Man, in the hood with the, with the cases yeah, and Moet. That's how it go. <laughs> the whole hood is out. In the garage. The house. Yeah. Man, we had the whole street blocked off. Yeah. Hell the whole yeah. hood came and supported me, man. Yeah. I'm in a little shack house. The house wasn't nothing bigger than this room. Man. That's how mine was. Man, the whole hood was out there. Everybody came and supported me, man. And people could stand outside. You couldn't even fit it, man. It was crazy. Reporters. So when they called, they drafted me, man. We went up. All you got the, the bottles popping and everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I started crying. You know what I mean? I hugged right. my brother, my mom, <clears throat> sisters, started crying. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the struggle we come through, you know yeah. what I mean? We come from. And, we made it. You know, my mama, she... Rest in peace, you know what I mean? She did everything she could do could do for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's the first thing I did. Bought my mom a house, you yeah. know what I'm saying? 18, you know what I mean? Took care of her, like stood on that and and every you know, every every day, you know what I mean, until she left this earth. So that's what thing, that's what I did it for. It's my mama, my brothers, my sisters, my kids, you know what I mean? That's it. How many teams did you work out for? Man, damn near 18 teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should have been a lottery pick. But see, they was I was a little rough around the edges, so yeah. you know, I, you know, it was a lot of politics went on, but you know, I was better than all them guys, really. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I killed everybody in my workouts, but you know, I look at you, you know, a little rough around the edges. You know, I've been through some things. Yeah, you know, in high school, you know, what I mean, too. So it's like, ah, uh, sure, you know, those guys out, playing. Yeah. So Portland, <laughs> what was your first stop when Portland drafted you? Man, I ain't never left the hood. I'm like Portland. Man, I was just. Excited, you know what I mean? Just, just hungry, you know what I mean? When you come from nothing, you, you got a hunger. Like, I'm still hungry, you know, I'm hungry every day. So mm-hmm. that's why I work hard at everything I do and every opportunity. But going to Portland, I just was like, man, I'm going to go in here and go hard every day. Who were some of your OGs on that team? Man, Damon, <clears throat> She, Bonzi. Mm-hmm. Man, the best OGs. JR Ryder, was he there yet? Nah, he, JR, JR, JR had, uh, yeah, he was gone. Okay. JR, that's the homie, though. Yeah. But, um, Man, it was shout out Bonzi. That's my man, boy. B Wells, M Town. That's my boy. Indiana, seven six five. Yeah. Talk about your rookie year. So you, you, I mean, high school, one year in college. Man, now you're eighteen on the other side of the country. Said you ain't never been out the hood. You're in Portland. Talk to us about that first year in, in, in the league and, and on that team. Man, it was it was rough, boy. It was homesick, rough, but homesick. Man, just. I remember being away. I asked Steve Kerr. We sitting on a plane. I asked Steve. I said, "Hey, Steve, he reading his book. He got his glasses on." I said, "Hey, Steve, man, can I go? When, when do we get to go home?" <laughs> he started laughing at me like, "Go home." I said, "He said, ain't no going home." I think I had hit the. This when I hit the wall. Mm, you know, hit that yeah, wall. You had enough, man. I said, Shh, "Whoa!" And I'm sitting. This is when. You, Back then, you could sit on the floor, so that yeah. floor was hard. Sitting on that floor every night, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, Say that. You know, it was great, though, man. You know, just learning experience. And even though I wasn't playing my rookie year, our practices, though, I mean, no, we had yeah. a squad. I yeah. mean. Yeah, they, they Pips, Sabonis, yeah. Kemp, Damon Stoudemire, she, man, Dale she, Davis, Steve Kerr, the player, Bonzi. Man, so practice was like game. So we was looking to practices every day. You know what's crazy is every time we talk to someone that came in around our time, all we talk about is how we used to battle in and practice. Practice, yeah. practice used to be like real war. Because that first 10, that first yeah. 10 going against Man. each other. Yeah. Everybody got something to prove. Yeah. War. Yeah. You know. Them is better than the real game. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what I'm saying. We used to go at it. That scrimmage against somebody spot taking. You know, you know how it was. Y'all, we, man, hell no, we got to go back. We ain't, yeah. hell no, nah, we ain't doing that. Nah, so coach, don't blow the we, whistle. Yeah, don't blow the whistle. Coach, let us run one more or two more. So. You know, that's how competitive, you know, we was in practice. Mm-hmm. Who was kind of, that the, the took you over, you know, took you under their arm as far as teaching you the kind of the NBA game? Man, I came in, all of them, man. Really, they all showed me love. Oh. Like, from Damon to Scotty, like, you know what I mean? I'm talking about, I was coming to the gym. I'm the first one at the gym. Scotty was one of the oldest players on the team when I came in, but he was still was 
one of the first ones at the gym. Mm-hmm. Like, he like, Zeebo, you coming in, you meet me at this time. So we there every day. He one of the first, we him first ones there, he lifting weights. Mm-hmm. He one of the first ones there, he lifting weights, working out. So, you know, he was a champion. So right. coming on his week and just learning from, you know, Steve and just everybody. It was all like big brothers to me because I was so young coming mm-hmm. to the league. And, right. you know, I'm 18? 18, yeah. Mm-hmm. Baby face, yeah, Zeebo. I <laughs> and I ain't know nothing, you know what yeah. I mean? So coming in, think I did. But one thing about me, they all respected me because I always respected them and I was soaked up everything. Right. So I'm mm-hmm. listening, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, now you tell a rookie to go do something, they gonna look at you like, mm-hmm. man. You go do it. It was different. You know, it was different then. You know what I'm saying? You know, they gamble, they give me 500, go to the store, get dice and all kind of shit, yeah. Zuzus, Wams. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, shit, come on with it. Yeah. <laughs> y'all want some more? What else y'all want? I'm going back. Like, give me. Like, oh, man, I'm like, that for deal? Come on. I'm that, yeah. 1500 down to 2000. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> Stacking it up. What? <laughs> man, I'm. Shit, it was, it was lovely, though, man. I, I mean, experience was great, man. You know what I mean? Like I told my brother, my, my other brother, my stepbrother, I said, man, I'm going to the league. I was telling, I was going to the league my sophomore and junior year. I'm like, man, I'm going to the league. Mm. Bro, looking at me like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, for real. Mm-hmm. You saw it happen. Hell yeah. How, how talented was Rasheed Wallace? Man, crazy. Like, that's crazy because, like you said, him and Eddie from Philly, too. Yeah. Like, they gang, like Rasheed, just everything he did, he was like a more, like you said, the type of hybrid fours and fives. Yeah. Now, yeah. she was one of them, too. Yeah. You know, she was one of the first, like, they get mad. She shoot more threes than the guards in the yeah. game. But she was hitting them joints, <laughs> though. You know what them. I mean? I'm like, damn. Facts. So, yeah, man, it was love. Portland was a great experience, you know what I mean? So, you know, we was the only show in town, you know what I mean? So, you know how it was. Was that the team that was labeled the Jailblazers? <laughs> Talk to us just kind of about some of the fun. You ain't got to get, you know what I mean, obviously, but some of the fun with that team. Because yeah, I said our We Believe team was well documented. We oh, was on some man. shit, but y'all was on some shit. On some shit man. shit. Man, you know, talk, we, I heard the story. Bonzi <laughs> told me everything. Man, I'm talking about, bro, we was the only people in town, so they, everybody. Yeah. yeah. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? And they few, we rough around the edges, too. Right. A little bit. You I, know like I, mean? I like his rough around the edges. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, yeah, so you know. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? You know, like the flower. You yeah. know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? So You started smoking your, your first year in the league? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And it just, just helped you with everything you was going Man, through. Everything. Right. Everything. You know, I'm I'm in the business too. Like, you know, right. like I said, I got, you know, grows and stores in Portland. I got, you know, business. So it helps you, man. It How does. important was it for you? Because I mean, I know you're not really a real big drinker. Yeah. Most of us can't handle pills. So I mean, for we we was our only real option. So how important was it for you throughout your career? Because you were able to play 17 years. Man, help me. You know, honestly, help me. You know what I mean? And um, you know, back then, you know how it was. You get your one test during mm-hmm. preseason. Preseason, burn it down, league. man. You know, what? It was they got a road in the car. Yeah, so road in the car. It was good was though, man. Test. Like you said, it's good for your bones, man. It's medicine. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's medicine. So, like you said, you ain't gotta take all them pills and you know mess your stomach up and be fucked up later on in life. So, you know, I, and I'd rather you know drink than I mean, rather smoke than drink anyway. Any you know day, I mean? any day. Mm-hmm. Two thousand two. The battle against the Lakers, you guys get uh, on their way to the three feet. They end up sweeping you guys. But the question is, how dominant were Shaq and Kobe at that time? Rest in peace, Bean, man. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest to do it, man. Just watching them, man. You know, Shaq and Kobe, like, you know, my magic and, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, Jordan and, mm-hmm. you know, Pippen was. So, you know, that's everybody. That was a show to watch. And it was one of the best ever. Definitely the top two be. duos of all time. Yeah, damn right. Easy. <laughs> That's an easy call. For sure. For sure. 2002, 2003, you play 80 games and start to get more minutes. What was it like waiting for an opportunity? I was like a pit ready to come out. Yeah, like, you I ready was to like, like, you know how the Greyhounds get them and run around the track. Like, they, like I was chase out the little rabbit or whatever. I was like that <laughs> because I was working so hard and I believed in myself. And if you ask Bonzi, all the make. I'm talking shit at 18, but I'm really out there handling my business as a youngster. Yeah. But I was putting my time in too. So, like Coach Cheeks always tell me, Scotty, all the guys should stay ready. So I'm I'm going against Rasheed Wallace. I'm going against these boys every day. Damon Stoudemire, I'm Vita Sabonis. I'm mm-hmm. going against all star players every day, and I'm going hard, bro. So that's how I built my game, staying after working out. So when they let me go, it was on. 
Because mm-hmm. I was ready and I had believed in myself and I had that confidence. That year, you guys run into Dallas in the playoffs in the first round, end up losing. Uh, how tough was Dirk that year? Man, I got his shoes. I got his shoes from that playoffs with really? one pair of shoes signed. Mm. Man, it was. Man, I studied that play. I, I watched film. Like, I watched that series when I was young. Like, the coach gave me that. He's John Laurie. We used to work out. Like, watch that film because that was what Dirk was doing. Like, you know, he's shooting right over your hand. You think you touching that junk going straight in. Mm-hmm. Going and, up, and Dirk one of the man, Dirk one of the best, you know, Hall, damn, you know, Hall of Famer, but one of the best to ever do it too. Absolutely. You know what I mean? One of the best to ever do it. Thirty three thousand points scored. Can't beat that. Yeah, yeah. So you get a little taste of the playoffs. Next year you come back at the with the vengeance, win most improved player, uh average twenty and ten. What was it like really finally getting to Cut your teeth, get out the cage, and, and really do your thing and show the world how hard all the work you put in was. It was great, man, to get a chance to be able to play. <clears throat> and then for my teammates to believe in me, you know what I mean, and to lead the team and and understand me, let me develop as a player and, and, and you know, allowing it. So it was great, and it worked out perfect because, you know what I mean, I was one of them that listened, and they, and they seen my growth and seen what I went through, and they seen the work I put in. So. You know, just staying at it. And I always came in with that, that I'm going to dominate every game type mm-hmm. of attitude, every game. You know, me and, me and my agent, we had a list. You know what I mean? Shout out to Ray, man. Raymond Brothers, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, we had a list. So every night, he like, Zebo, you got such and such a night. I got to get this W. You go on him. He already got the scout report. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going at him. Every, mm-hmm. I ain't turned nothing down. I don't give mm-hmm. a Shaq. We's playing Shaq. I'm going at him. I'm... Go in front of him. I'm a, I'm a rustler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, damn, I'm, mm-hmm. man, I'm, you going to knock me down, but I'm going to get up, man. Right, you can't right. turn nothing down, you know? So, And that was my type of attitude I had. So, And it helped me, man, my career. Mm-hmm. What was it like entering a high-level NBA, uh, high NBA Power Four conversation? Man, a blessing. You know what I mean? A blessing, you know, to be able to, you know, players I played against to say that. I was, the, you know, one of the best Power Fours that ever played the game. And, Duncan, you know, KG, and, and, yeah. Webb. Dirk, Webb. Yeah, so. That's your era. Yeah. Rasheed. Rasheed. And just to be able to say that, man, it's a blessing. You know what I mean? Coming where I come from and things I went through and, and you know, being me and also having the, the respect. You know, I treat everybody the same with respect. So getting that love and respect back, you know what I mean? I'm going to treat the, the richest man like I treat the poorest man. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to feel comfortable in, in the hood. You know, right. I'm not, because I got money, I'm not going to be. I can't go to Watts or I can't go to right. Detroit or back to my hood. Like, nah, I, I don't really believe in that. You right. know what I mean? You know what I mean? So having that line of respect and, and treating everybody the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who were some of your uh your, your favorite matchups in that power forward, that real heavy power forward era? Man, all of them, man. Duncan, you know what I mean? There were some hard matchups. KG. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm six nine. These dudes seven foot and six eleven, six twelve, so. You know, ticket, his hands big, grabbing you and mm-hmm. he controlling you. I'm like, man, refs let him do what he want. And <laughs> you know what I mean? So just, man, all them battles, man. C Web, you know, I was a youngster, but you know, he's battling, man. Mm-hmm. But yep. you always held your own, though, yeah. always. Yep. Wasn't jumping high, wasn't running fast, yep. but was going to get that work. <laughs> <laughs> was going to get that work. So Portland goes into rebuild mode, trading Rashid away, and giving you your first big deal, six year, uh, $84 million extension. What was it like, obviously, making the league, you get your money, but really getting that first deal? What was that like? Man, I cried again, man. I ain't going to lie. Teddy yeah, man, Teddy Bear. Yeah. Man, humble guy, you know? Yeah. But, man, it was a blessing, man. And not only that, I wasn't satisfied, you know what I mean? So I wanted to continue to work. When I seen them, you know, I'm continue going, you know? Mm-hmm. Continue to stay hungry. Like, I got the same hunger. So, you know, with just in life and getting better as a person, father, business, just everything I'm doing. So just... Staying hungry, you know what I mean. Keeping that will, thinking them every time I was on the court. You know, I, I'm mm-hmm. thinking I'm the best player. All right, I you fears is bring me off the bench. I still would think I'm the best player. You know what I mean. So just having that confidence. You know what I mean. So you have a way. nice six year run in Portland. Uh, you get traded to the Knicks. Uh, was that out of nowhere? You kind of knew it was coming. Man, you know what, Kevin Pritchard. Let me tell you a funny story. Man, I was in at the Bellevue Wilshire after the season. 
the tray about to come up. I see Kevin. I'm in LA. I'm here. I'm at the Wilshire. I see Kevin Pritchard. He was the general manager at the time, Portland. So I see Kevin downstairs in the check-in. You know, they got the two, you know, at the Wilshire. Mm -hmm. We stay got the two sides and mm -hmm. check-in side. So we in the check-in side. I'm like, Kevin, what's up? He like, man, I'm like, how you doing? He's like, man, hey, Zach. Man, I'm not trading you. You're good. You know, because I, I wasn't expecting to see him. He was just down alive. He's like, I'm not trading you. Good. My first time getting traded, bro. I'm not trading you. You're good, man. Don't worry about it. So I go upstairs. I tell my brother, I like, shit, man, I just seen Kevin. I ain't going nowhere. I'm, you know, I'm still going to be here because obviously, you know, I didn't want to get traded. It's my first, mm -hmm. any player that they first time, you know, some players, you know, at an elite level can say that, but you ain't going to get traded their first time. It's going to bother no. you. So, I'm like, what? So I go back upstairs, tell them, geek, like, I ain't getting traded. Made a show come on. First thing they say, D, man, same you going day? to New York. Same day? Yeah, I just seen the wow. same day as the draft. Mm. I said, damn. Come on. I called me. Raymond. Man, Kevin say he ain't traded. So Ray, like, man, just be ready, just watch it. They see me in New York. But it was a great experience. You know what I mean? New York, I was only there a short time, but it was an organization great. And I had a good time playing that Big Apple, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing, I mean, in the, in Playing the big at the time. Yeah, one season with the Knicks, and then you you come back out to L.A. Yeah. Come out, or you could not back out, so you, you come out to L.A. What was your experience like playing with that uh, young Clipper team? Man, it was great. You know Who was I on mean? the team there? Man, B.D., Marcus Canby, young DeAndre. Mm -hmm. We had a squad. Mike Taylor, he was the guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B.D. I had B.D. So, man, it was good, man, just being out here, and we super. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The record wasn't that good, but man, we had some good players, man. So LA Clippers to Memphis. Man. Where you really kind of, you know I mean, make a home. Yeah. Talk to us about that experience. M Town. M Town, man. That's my second home, man. Shout out, man. M Town, 901, you know? Yes, sir. Pure no, it passion. was great. It, it was great. Shout out, Pure Passion. <laughs> <laughs> That's my spot. They still got your jersey up there? Man, tell you, I can't wait till they reopen. We was just in Memphis and there wasn't nothing going on. I can't wait till things get back normal in Memphis, man. That's my city. And uh, Harold's Chicken. Man, what? That no, food. it's Gus. It's Gus. Gus Chicken. Gus Chicken? Yeah, Gus That's Chicken. That's bomb, too. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. Coming to Memphis, it was really like a, a blessing, man. It was like a, really a blessing, man. And, um, you know, just because it's a hard-working city, like, right. I, I fit in. It was like a puzzle. It was like, boom, you know what I mean, with the team. and It was your team. Yeah, it was just like, like I was the missing piece or whatever. So, you know what I mean? We had, you know, Rudy and, you know, he had great players. It was great players around. So, coming in with Mark and Mike, it was just all coming together. And um, I think we, first year, we won like 15 or 10 more games. You could see the... Growth you can see coming. it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? You can see what's coming if, you know, we kept together. And then I think the next year we, I think we made it our third year playoffs. And then, but we kept improving. So <clears throat> when we did that playoffs, man, we was ready and got T.A. You know, T.A. came. So with him just making it complete with the, on the defensive end and just everything, it was just, uh, you know, the right fit. So being in that city, man, and, and them fans, and the way the city embraced me, bro, that's mm -hmm. that's home. You know what I mean? Like, Memphis is always going to be home. And, you know, ain't no FedEx for them, you know? Ain't no team playing whoop that trick in their gym. You nah, know what I mean? Nah. Every, and everybody up there, <laughs> ah, go crunk, crazy, bro, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, everybody crazy. I'm talking about. Black people, white crazy. people, Mexican, everybody of all race standing up having a good time dancing. Yeah. And you could tell the city was really behind you. So, Man, it was probably, you know, it's my best city I played in, man. And um, you know, that's home, man. Yeah, good, yeah, good, good team. Yo, yeah. with the first you guys made it to the Western Finals, right? Yeah. It's Western yeah, Finals. Yeah, squad. I got a question. What was your cause I never even I mean, we've been cool, but I never even asked you this. What was your issue with Blake Griffin? Why every man, that's time my we, boy. I why, fuck why, with Blake. Why every man, time Blake. we play you he would he, he, man, he, he was Blake. scared to death. Man, Blake, man, strong, Blake, strong Blake was strong. Strong motherfucker, what? wasn't he? Hmm. You know how he is. <laughs> just just, and, was... and, and you know Blake was a player who who had confidence too. And mm -hmm. you know he went Blake went back and down. Mm -hmm. You know I, you know what I mean me and Blake we laugh about it now. We cool now, but y'all used to have you know, some real battles. We had we, real battle, like some real. Battles. You know what I mean? And I ain't playing. I ain't no I ain't your friend on the court. So it's like right. we really I'm really gonna go at you. You know what I mean? I remember Matt smacked the shit out of me. I turn around. I thought it was Blake. I'm like, damn, bro, what's up, man? <laughs> Matt, Matt, like, man. 
Uh, hey, hey, he was just bullying hey, he the fuck out of bro. He, he, bullied, did, he, was, hey, he did the shit on purpose. Hey, he was too, bullying said, the fuck out of Blake. So I had to <laughs> the boy. I had to foul him hard, man. He was bullying. And we bro. almost he came in like kind of gave me like a low key hug. I thought we was gonna have to throw him like fuck, but, but he kept bullying Blake. So I kind of had to show Blake I had his back. Hey, I was like, damn, I'm about to get his disease. I found the shit, shit out, said, out of him, didn't damn. I? <laughs> like, I had to. Like I had to. That's my dog too. I was like, out of all people, I had because he just had this. He was he was just bullying Blake. They got down on the ground one time. They was in some grappling shit, and one game you got kicked out. Like that shit was man, that we shit was out fun. There really Went hard. Like, the league ain't they ain't gonna nah. let you play like that yeah, now. Nah, we was Not going at all. Ain't gonna let you. We you was know. going real hard. You know what's your relationship with uh with describe? I know your relationship, but describe your relationship with Tony Allen, one of the man, best defenders that, to play the game. Man, that's my brother, man. Shout ain't out to love, T. you know what I mean? And bless it to him. And you know, T H E in Memphis still. You know yep. he's doing business and. Mm-hmm. You know, been a family man, so man, number but love, you know, for all them guys, Mike, Mark, you know, I talked to Mike a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. you know, so it's all love, man, you know how we are, we gonna, we gonna talk to everybody, you yeah. know what I mean? T.S. Silent one too. Yeah, for sure. So 17 year run, when you decide to hang it up, how was it, was it tough to come to terms? Your body was talking to you, what was the deciding factor on you deciding to hang it up? Man, I kind of like, when I was sitting out, I think I, I left Sacramento, I had, Went to Dallas, got traded. I didn't go, but you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I had gave it a little time, you know what I mean, to see what was going on. And I wasn't going like sit around for no two or three years. Like a lot of players right. still ain't officially retired. Like, mm-hmm. I ain't nah, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on in business and <clears throat> a lot of st- other stuff I want to do and, you know, with my kids and and um, everything. So I was like, you know what, man, I, I, I'm good where I'm at. I took care of my money. You know what? I'm happy. You know, let's do it. I'm ready. You know, retire, man. I, I feel good about it. You know, I work out every day and um, take care of myself. So, man, it's it been a blessing, bro. That's what Jack said. Jack said he still like he look like he in good shape, like he could yeah. play. Yeah. Boy, out here looking good. I still give you the business, man. Yeah. I still give him the business, though. I still give him the business. Yeah, I ain't never doubted that. <laughs> so, what comes to mind when 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 I say one of the most classic lines ever? In my hood, bullies get bullied. Talk to us about that, cause Mass I was fight. kinda. Man, a young boogie. man, little bro, uh, you know, boogie, man, he beasting down there, man, telling and, and, y'all just alike, yeah, and he telling uh, buddy, he got buddy shook up, he like, buddy, I'm like, man, leave buddy, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, man, my alone, leave buddy alone, you know, we laugh, like, need leave buddy alone, like, need, cause he bullying, but I'm like, need stop there, you know, where we from, bullies get bullied, you know yeah. what I mean, just laughing at him and shit, you know, I'm, I always fuck with little bro, but uh. Yeah, you know, he a beast, though. How nah, talented no, was love. Healthy Boogie? Talk to us about what? how talented he was. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Just how big he is, how he can move, and, you know, how he uses his body. And, he, you know, what was he, Boogie? About 6'11", 7 mm-hmm. foot. With so, handle. With handle, can shoot the jump. Then he, he ain't soft, so he going to bang you. Yeah. And he going to dunk you. So it's like he had it really had it. Boogie got the whole package. You know, mm-hmm. I know he, mm-hmm. you know, the injuries or whatever kind of, but, man. He was on pace yeah. to go down as one of the greatest. For real. No question. Yeah. After retirement, obviously fatherhood comes first and foremost. Uh, you enroll your your daughter to play with Cove. Yeah. Talk yeah. to us about those experiences. Because when I talked to Cove, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I got these girls running the triangle. We're practicing five or six days yeah. a week. I'm like, bro, these are little girls. He's like, I don't care. We for out real. here working, he but that man, shit was serious. Man, he for real. Like, <laughs> Kobe ran him like ran him like a real like the protein. Lead, like a real protein. Bro, it was bro. crazy. He tell like I'm running like a real. That's how he says he wants. That's how I'm doing it. I'm talking about every day. Got trainers on the beach, eating, gather everything but together. These are little girl, like young girls, yeah, young. and you and you was coming from way out. Where you coming from? By me, yeah, and going all the way out there every day, <laughs> every day, <laughs> every day, bro. I'm like, damn. But it was a blessing. My daughter, she loved it. You know, Kobe, man. I called Kobe. I got her hold on him. We was moving out here. She like, Daddy, I want to play for Kobe. She came to me about it. She said, you think I can play for his team? You know, I'm going to do anything for my kids. Yes, so that's right. I instantly, you know, I ain't had Kobe number, but I reached out to somebody who did. And, man, Kobe texted me, like, the next day, like, what's up, Zebo? Hit back. He like, like, man, my daughter, we moving out there. She want to play. Can she try out? You got a spot for her. He's like, look, you know, she can come. We can see how it go. You know, I think one of our bigs, one of the bigs was hurt or something, or I just left, moved somewhere. And McKinley came, man. It was like the, the, the missing piece. Kobe loved her, man. The girls mm-hmm. and, you know, 
And, and when he told me he loved my baby, bro, I told mm-hmm. him, I said, I love you. Yeah, mm-hmm. right I said, there. you love Straight mine, out. I love you. And, Straight out. You know what I mean? That's how I was, you yeah. know what I mean? Number love and respect. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I want to ask though, because oh. I, I already told him when this shit started. <laughs> oh, oh. You would motherfucking kill the big three. Any chance that Ice Cube's going to see you out there? Man, I ain't going to lie, man. I ain't, shit. Before the corona hit, when that... I was talking to you and you. I was ready. I was going to show out, too. Oh, I don't I, know, we man. broke the internet yeah. when I posted that. I broke the internet. Zevo, Captain of the Trilogy. For sure. I was like, what, Zevo? Yeah, it's going down. <laughs> yeah, I just, man, I'm at the point. I can't, you know, I'm probably playing some rec ball, but I ain't. Mm-hmm. I can't do Then down there battling with Big Reggie and Big Baby, you know, them boys real country strong, man. I said, man, I'm going to tie these old shoes up real tight, man. Get on their ass, you know? But, nah, but, uh, man, nah, I couldn't just, can't do it, man. I couldn't do it. Thoughts on this uh, young Grizzly squad? I was just down there a couple weeks ago watching a man, a beast. I mean, Ja, Jaren, X, and the the upside of them is is so crazy, man, and and you know, Ja, he's special, and Jaren, mm-hmm. you know, the Spartan mm-hmm. dogs, and they got a good core of players, you know, Dylan, and you got some good players, so I think where the Grizzlies going right now is is great, man. Yeah, they're definitely you know? in, in, in the yeah, right direction. Yeah, they building stage, yeah, definitely is. I want to uh, shout out something, but tell some funny stories, so back when I went and played with them, this nigga always used to try to take the radio over in the locker room, bro. Always. Debo. But he, but he was always, he was always bumping somebody. Always. Zebo. You got to check out my new artist, Matt. His name is Moneybag. He from out here. He going to be nice. So he used to bump this shit until he'd be day. like, yo, turn that shit <laughs> off, bro. Lo and behold, man, you got just cracked the number one album in the yeah. world. Congrats, bro. Yeah, Congrats, man. Congrats Moneybag, Shout yo. Shout out Moneybag. Yeah. Shout, Shout out Lakin, Moneybag, bro. man. Yeah. Shout out Endless, man. Yeah. Shout yeah. out CMG, hey, BG, hey, man. Hey, bro, he was bumping your shit in 2000. Was that 14, 15? Yeah. First kick that shit off. Bro, every motherfucking day. Every time we, every time we was in the locker room, he was pumping that shit. He's like, every my day. new artist. I'm like, that's what's up. And it ended yeah. up being, I mean, this man got the number one album in the, in, in the world now, man. So congratulations. Man, appreciate it, man. That's what's up. Blessing, man. You know what I mean? And, you know, money bag, man. You know, he one of the best at it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And just saying that because my little brother, but he's really talented. And, man, um, just a blessing, man, for everything. How'd you get in that space? Just been in the city, you know. Been in the city and just hooking up and being out there. You know, I'm in the community, man. Everywhere I go, mm-hmm. I'm in the community. Mm-hmm. L.A. to Indiana to... Memphis to everywhere and um, you know, just giving back and just giving back and we hooked up, you know, and he was hot, man. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and I seen him like, yeah, first time let's start this label. We did it together, started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, how how does it feel like I know it ain't the first artist that you got involved with. And I know I've been in music, we didn't had a lot of artists, people we tried to help. How good does it feel to know that you finally got it right? It was my first artist. This is your first artist? Yeah. yeah. It was the first artist. Bag was my first artist. Mm-hmm. And it was a hit. It was a blessing. Like, yeah. God, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like you said, I came in and Dale Davis, he used to have a record label yeah. called War. Yeah, I remember you know, I'm that. I'm a youngster, so you know, I'm soaking up a game. So Dale was always shitty. Like, man, this shit cost me money and I lose a millions of dollars. Man, mm-hmm. I'm like, what? He like, man, don't never vest and shit. I'm like, so I always, everybody's come to me about music all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, I ain't doing that. But when I was in Memphis and a little later on, hearing hearing money back, I was like, yeah, he hard. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to try to do this and do it the right way. And I don't no, look, I remember man. when you like, first I got it right. I man, came and yeah. told you, I was like, who is this? This little yeah. nigga's hard. For He's really? like, this is my, this is my artist. Yeah, man, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, five years later, this dude got the number one album in the world. So that shit is dope. You got to link me with him. I got to meet him because you know he'll fell a brother yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's I got to meet him. So outside of music, uh, you know, post career, what else you in business wise? What are you working man, on? Man, I got it. You know, honestly, I'm in the marijuana industry, you know, real estate. I'm really an entrepreneur, man. I try to do every do everything I can learn about, you know what I mean? I learn shit every day and, and I'm open to learning. So I just want to get out there and get into certain things that I've never been in technology. You know, I'm trying to invest in some of that right now. So, man, I'm just trying to just move and groove, man, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, he FaceTimed me. He FaceTimed me on about 20 acres one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Out there living good. Yeah. <laughs> Quick hitters, first team to come to mind. Give us an answer. Top five artists. Right now, Jay Z, Drake, baby. Man, it's, I listen to everybody, man. Everybody, I ain't. It's list can go on and on, man. Nas, mm-hmm. 
you know, I listen to everything. I, I just love music, man. I listen to everything. Mm-hmm. You ever try to rap yourself? Nah. I'm better at being a CEO. I can't mm-hmm. rap, There man. you go. No, Stack you Jack rogue. and rap, though. Yeah. I can't rap, though. Rug <laughs> rap. Top five forwards of all time. Power forwards. Power forwards, excuse me. Power forwards of all time. Man. Duncan. Ticket. Mm-hmm. I've got to put Dirk in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shaq. You going to go with Shaq or Power Forward or Center? Oh, no, okay. Shaq, Shaq Center, forward. yeah, Power Forward. I put Dirk. Um, Dirk Ticket, Duncan. Shit, it's a lot of them, man. The list can be. Go see where. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shit. Carl? Yeah, male man. <laughs> yeah, he got to be man. somewhere around there. I grew up watching Carl, yeah. Bar- the male man there. Barkley. Barkley. Yeah, a bar- it's a really list, man. It's good. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's a long a list, long bro. List. Kemp. Mikhail. I mean, being you, in that West. You. Man, you. Appreciate it, definitely, man. You definitely in that West. You definitely in that West. Yeah. See, he was in that West, so like. McDice. Yeah, like West. back in when I, I was in the Weasley, like every night it was a battle. Like, I'm talking about the West had all three, the power fours. It was threes and fours back then. Yeah. Threes and fours, or two yeah. threes and fours. Like. Hey, it's fun. I don't mean to interrupt, but you just reminded me of something. He said the West. Do you remember when y'all played San Antonio? Bun, me and Bozzy talk about this all the time. I said, Bonzi, pull up, bro. Come smoke when y'all get there. The whole team showed up at my house. <laughs> Every last one of y'all, dog. I'm like, Bonzi. He's like, everybody wanted to come. Bro, y'all whole team was in my garage, <laughs> dog. You remember that? Man, I remember a lot, a lot of times, shit. That was just <laughs> a, lot a lot of times. Time. <laughs> I remember a lot of times. I swear. Nah, but it's, it's a lot of, man. It's a lot of, like you said, the greatest power Pours conversations a lot on man. Yeah. That, that list. And King's King's right smack middle of that era, yeah. Uh outside game, you taking four people to the blacktop with you. Who you taking? Blacktop. Black I'm taking Tony Allen for sure. Man, he gonna, he gonna get to the hole. He ain't gonna let you get by him. Mm-hmm, man. Stack Jack. I'm mm-hmm, going. Mm-hmm. I'm there. I'm pulling up. I like Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. Marcus Smart, T A. T.A. Yeah, man, I, would, I would have took Quintel Wood. I was I thinking that the Woods. whole time. I, I was took, waiting for you to say yeah, it. I'm, took, I'm sitting there thinking that, bro. I'm like, <laughs> if he don't say his boy I gotta name, take, I gotta your take right you, hand. You know I that's I your took, rider. Yeah. He got to go. I took my boy Q Woods, man. Yeah, he had his Show. best on the black top. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Show. He was tough. Yeah. So. Shout out yep. to Q, man. Mm-hmm. Show. Toughest battle on the post in your career? I was a youngster, but he was like... Uh, he was like really woke me up to the league. Like, man, this is really a, a grown man league. It was PJ Brown. Oh man, bro, I'm oh. talking about it. couldn't move me. <laughs> like, damn, I was like 18, 19. So I'm like, you know, and, and still, as I still carry played Kobe, he still was the same way. You know, PJ was always one of them guys who always took care, you know, was cut up and you know what I mean, like, strong and quiet, but just Hands is big. You, I couldn't do nothing. Yeah, like, we came in with some real grown yeah. men, bro. But I, we came in. It was the real, real grown, grown men. <laughs> real. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Definitely Pop, Biggie, Dr. Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. Obama, mm-hmm. my great grandmother. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never really got. I never got to meet her. I heard so much about her. No, mm-hmm. that's hard. That's hard. Last question. Who do you want to see on on All the Smoke? But you got to help us with your answer. I already know who I want to see, who, who I know you can help us with. Man, I'll get my boy Q Woods on there. Yeah, Q. Get Q on Q there. and money bag. And bag. We need bag on here, too. Get bag for sure. Yes, we need bag on yeah. here for sure. Mm. Hell yeah. Zebo, I appreciate you, bro. Man, come on, Thank man. Thank you for stopping by. My boy. No, but we love finally it. got it. it. Appreciate yeah, finally, it, man. man. We've been trying so. to track this man down for a minute, man. That's a wrap. <laughs> All I'm- the Smoke. Special edition, Zebo. Yes, sir. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. Peace.
champions collide. That powerful left hook. Jermel Charlo bringing his three titles to the ring. The Young Lion roaring tonight. Brian Castaño putting his championship belt on the line. He has to rise to the occasion. Who will become the undisputed champion of the world? The best fighting the best. History will be made. Jermel Charlo versus Brian Castaño for the undisputed 154-pound world title. Live on Showtime.